we will start the health talk soon. Uh, before we start, please uh, be reminded that there will be a recording in the live stream to our Radimas constituency Facebook. So please don't reveal any personal and private details. Please also mute your mic while the nurses are presenting. Only unmute when you need to speak. Okay, can start with it. Okay, thank you. Okay, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Can? <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so hope all of you have had a good lunch. Thank you for joining us on our Heart Failure Health Talk in collaboration with Radin Masiti. I am Siti, and here to give the talk with me is my colleague, Mr. Go Wei Hao, and we are community Hi, nurses everybody. from SGH. So sit back and let's dive in. Let's go through the content today. We are going through what is heart failure, causes and risk factors of heart failure, symptoms of heart failure, how to manage heart failure, and living with heart failure. Firstly, let us watch a short video of how our heart function. Everyone knows that the heart is one of the most vital organs of the human body and is located on the middle left side of your chest. But do you know about its essential function? Well, the heart's important job is to pump blood through the circulatory system, thus providing the oxygen-rich blood required for staying alive. Staying alive. Staying alive. Ha! 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 Okay. As, you, as the video says, the heart is a very important organ that pumps blood to all the parts of our body. It is divided into four chambers, which are divided into doors or the valves. So what happens in heart failure? Heart failure occurs when the heart is no longer able to match the body's demand. This moan commonly occurs because the heart is unable to function efficiently due to disease or injury. And this happens because the body demands are more than what the heart can cope with, even though the heart may be normal, making the body compensating it in other ways. There are two types of heart failure. Now, we, number one, unable to pump enough blood to meet the body's demands. And another one is unable to feel properly due to stiff, thickened muscle. And because of this, it causes a decrease in the blood flow output, causing poor blood supply to the rest of the body. So as we mentioned, unable to pump enough blood in the body's demands. So what happened in this? It is due to diseases or injuries to the heart muscles, heart valves, or electrical system of the heart. This damage weakens the heart, causing heart failure. Common examples of this include fluid in the heart tissue, or medically known as congestive heart failure. The second cause is a stiff heart that is unable to fill properly with blood or poor blood supply, even though it may still be able to pump well. This leads to increased pressures within the heart chambers, eventually 
in the blood vessels of the lungs, causing heart failure. This is more commonly seen in patients with high cholesterol and high blood pressure. So both of these conditions eventually cause a decrease in heart's blood flow and function, causing inadequate blood supply to the rest of the body. So what are the risk factors in heart failure? So the heart, number one, the heart arteries become severely narrowed and gets blocked over time from cholesterol buildup, causing damage to the heart muscle and reduce the ability to pump out blood. Number two, poorly controlled high blood pressure makes the heart and blood vessel, causes them to overwork and cause serious damage to the arteries. And the next one, high blood cholesterol, or known as LDL in blood tests, or the bad cholesterol, and triglycerides in the blood causes the buildup of fats, cholesterol, and other substances in the artery walls. The next one is uncontrolled diabetes. This will cause damage to the nerves and blood vessels that controls the heart. The next one is smoking. Smoking damages blood vessels, reduces amount of oxygen in blood, causing the heart to beat faster and harder. This goes to be the same as passive smokers. Those who breathe in other people's smokes also suffer the same health risks as smokers. The next one is heavy alcohol consumption. Heavy alcohol consumption raises blood pressure, which will worsen the heart failure, leading to a stroke. And lastly, family history of heart failure has higher risk of developing heart diseases. So what happens when the heart becomes weak? As I mentioned, the body will try to compensate, right? So the body will try to retain all the salt and water to compensate for all the poor blood supply in the body. And one example is the kidneys respond by retaining fluids and having excess fluids collecting in the body, giving rise to these symptoms feeling tired or waking up in the night due to breathing difficulties, swelling of the feet, ankles or abdomen, sudden weight gain, and fluid in the lungs causing shortness of breath, coughing and wheezing. Next, let me pass to my colleague, Mr. Rehal, to teach on the management of heart failure and how to live well with heart failure. Okay. So now we come to the management of heart failure. Before I begin, everyone can hear what I'm saying? Yes. All right. Okay, so mainly medication compliance is very important to manage our heart failure because these medications, as you take them, they will help you to increase survival rate, reduce hospital admission, and the severity of heart failure symptoms, meaning this medication can reduce all of this and helping you to live a better quality of life in the community. And also, it is also very important to take your medication as prescribed by the doctor and inform your doctor if you do any uh, side effect to this medication so that the doctor can re-examine to as which uh, the medication is more uh, more suited for you in this heart failure condition. The okay, next slide, please. So not only that, you need to eat lesser fat, and this less fat in your diet will help to reduce your cholesterol level to maintain a healthy body weight. And so this, uh, the below are some of the choices that you can see, such as uh, avocado, olive seeds, including chia seeds, olive oil, nuts, seed oils, canola, and vegetable oils, oily fish such as uh, salmon, tuna, and mackerel, and nuts and nut butter. So all these food choices are a healthier kind of fat for you to consume. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So we also need to reduce uh, cholesterol-rich food and we need to avoid things like egg, egg yolks, uh, organ meat, seafood such as sweet because they contain high amount of uh, dietary cholesterol. And this, dietary, this form of dietary cholesterol may increase your blood cholesterol level, bringing you a higher risk of getting worsening heart failure. So that is why we need to reduce all these cholesterol-rich foods. 
Yeah, and the pictures there shows the pictures there shows that um these are the foods that we students consume. Lah. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So we need to have uh, increased fiber intake because uh increased fiber intake will particularly uh sol soluble fiber will improve your blood cholesterol level. And here are the below are some of the common sources of fiber, uh, such as vegetable, fruit, whole grain product, bean, and nuts as well. Okay, next slide. And we need to reduce our sugar intake. So as of how much sugar intake we should be reducing, this is we need to speak with our dietitian about our dietary requirements because different people have different dietary requirements. And let's say if you cut too much sugar, maybe you will have lesser energy for you and you may, your body may, may not be able to cope with the low energy for the day. That's why it's important to speak with the dietitian and also find out how much you how much more you can keep on a healthy diet from your dietitian as well. And just for everybody to note that actually a high sugar diet uh, can contribute to weight gain, which is a significant risk factor of worsening heart failure. So that is why sugar control is important as well. Next slide, please. Not only sugar, but so low sodium diet is also important because too much sodium or salt in your body can lead to the increase of blood pressure and water retention. And it is best to keep sodium within normal range to less than 2000 mg per day. So, what does it mean by that? Is that we can actually uh, avoid processed foods such as uh, fish balls, uh, fish cakes, sausages. And salted eggs, pickles, which contain high levels of sodium. So if we can avoid that, it will be good. Mm, the next slide, please. Okay, so fluid restriction. We also need to uh, watch out for our fluid. So how do we do that? Is that we actually need to monitor our lower leg swelling. Okay, because too much. To which will lead to lower leg swelling in patients who have heart failure. So the amount of fluids to be taken is not more than 1.5 liters per day, or as instructed by your doctor, because different uh, patients have different uh, weight and also their limitations to drink how much per day is also controlled uh, very strictly. And also we need to monitor the weight because if there's a sudden increase in weight, this could mean that actually there might be an excess fluid collecting inside your body. So that's why taking uh, your weight is important and you need to record it down to, to track your progress. And also it will be good if you can bring your record to see, a, see your heart doctor. Yeah, so for the fluid restriction, this also includes coffee, tea, soup, Porridge and the water you take for your the water that you take for your meditation. So all these uh, little little fluids are all taken into consideration in regards of uh, fluid restriction. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So smoking cessation. So it is good or it is advisable for everybody that uh, to quit smoking, especially patients with heart failure, because uh, smokers up to three times more likely to suffer heart attack and at the same time smoking is also one of the risk factors for getting a heart failure to be worsened. So the sooner you quit, the more you can reduce your chances of getting a heart disease. The next slide. And exercise is pretty important in heart failure because this improves your blood circulation to the muscles and limbs and as well as reduces your sharpness of breath from day to, uh, day, to day. So exercises mainly help to increase or maintain your muscle strength, improve confidence to move about independently, improve balance and coordination and mobility as well. They will reduce the risk of falling, improve mood and overall well-being. 
So all these exercises will ultimately contribute to making your heart pump blood better in terms of circulation. And this strengthens your heart, muscles, and your bones in your body. It slows down the deterioration of heart failure and reduces the risk of getting another heart attack. And they sort of decrease your body weight. And as you exercise more, your breathlessness actually comes down. And also you will have more stamina to carry out daily tasks even more. So the next slide. So one of the treatment to as of to how to manage heart failure is that the doctor will actually uh, put some stent or what we call the coronary bypass operation for blocked arteries, repairs or replacement of the damaged heart valve. So as you can see the center of the image below, that there is this thing called arteriosclerotic plate, whereby there is some form of, of narrowing or the building up of the bad cholesterol in the artery that causes the heart not being able to receive blood and fail eventually. So what happened is that uh, the doctor will put a balloon catheter or what we call a stand as well to open up the blood vessels or blood arteries so that the blood will flow through and the heart will receive enough blood to continue to circulate and pump more effectively as of the management. Yeah. Next slide, please. So with that, we need to have a specialist follow-up, which is our heart doctor, okay? Because they will give you medications to help you reduce your symptoms and also to slow down the deterioration of the heart. And if depending on your condition, it is very good, a uh, yearly follow-up will be done for you to monitor your condition. Sometimes they would, uh, they will do a scan, a heart scan to see if that it to see if your heart condition is actually decreasing. Yeah, and also there will be the doctors will review your medication from time to time to see which other medications are necessary to be added or be removed depending on the condition. Okay, next slide. So all in all, living with heart failure, you just need to uh, have good quality, a uh, good lifestyle modification or simple lifestyle modification to reduce the risk of uh, your condition being deteriorating. So all the above is what I have uh, covered. Having a low salt diet, uh, compliance with uh, fluid restriction, uh, also stop smoking or smoking cessation, reduction in alcohol consumption, weight loss for patients who are obese and also regular exercise. So for so we have a video below to see if to see uh, what are further more things that we can do in the community to live with heart failure. Hi, uh, is there supposed to be any volume? Sorry, can I see? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Then, uh, I think there's no sound for the the video. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Not only does being can see now can see. Ben Al has heart failure. Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry, thank you.
Cực kỳ nô sao Sorry, uh, there's no sound. Uh. Can you hear anything? Yeah, before some time, we have some technical difficulties. Yeah, you are okay, trying to adjust it. Thank you. Can you hear now? Can you hear? No, she doesn't have any sound. There's no sound still? You can try that again. Okay. It's not pumping blood. Oh yeah, but it's rather soft. Will you be able to increase the volume? Okay, hold on now. However, it's able to live a normal active life. Next. She's able to do so because she's learned to Can take hear? good care of herself. I think it's fine. Can you know? Is it is it because it's uh it's still rather soft, I think. Uh um, wise if it's a max, I think it's fine. We still be able to okay. catch okay. it. Okay. I think Sometimes, sorry, yeah. Not only does being active make patients feel better, it may decrease symptoms of heart failure and improve yeah, I can do it now. Al uses two methods to relieve her symptom of breathlessness when it happens. For the first sleep feeling technique, she first shapes her lips. Okay, I'm really so sorry for the technical. <laughs> it seems that the vo the volume got cut through again and again. Sorry, so sorry about it. Okay, just con I'm just going to continue from here. Tell me if you cannot hear, okay? Okay. Okay. Men okay. Al will need to check her doctor or physiotherapist first if she wishes to start on a new. Okay, I think don't put full screen. There's some okay. activities that will make the heart work harder, and do the then for heart failure patients like Madam Al should avoid lifting and carrying items which weigh more than 5 kilograms. Avoid heavy housework such as vacuum cleaning, mopping, cleaning the bathroom and doing heavy laundry. Avoid climbing more than 3 stories of stairs at a time. Avoid slopes and overhead bridges as much as possible. Avoid engaging in vigorous activity. Sit down during activities like bathing, dressing, and cooking. Walk slowly and take frequent breaks during a long journey. Wherever possible, use a trolley to transport heavy items. Store frequently used items such as cups, plates, and bowls in easy to reach places. If the lift does not stop at her destination level, 
Madam Al should take the lift to a higher level and walk down the stairs. Use the escalator whenever possible. Now that you've seen what heart failure patients like Madam Al can and cannot do, let's move on to see how exercise. Okay, so with that, with, with that video, we'll end this uh, presentation for today. So thank you everyone for your time and here are our references. Yeah, does anyone have any question? Any question? So sorry for the technical um oh, just now. So sorry. Any question? No problem. Thank you. Thank you, City and Ray Hao. I think there's one question on the chat itself. Uh, Sharon is actually asking, how do you know when a heart attack is coming? Or is, uh, I would say, uh, is acting up? Like, there's a sign of heart attack. City, you want to answer or I can answer? Anything else? Okay, okay. La, maybe, I, maybe I answer. Okay, can, can. Up to you. Can, can, can. Okay. So for Sharon, right? Sorry. Yeah. So how do you know actually if that you have a heart attack coming? Is that actually number one, you will have severe chest pain. So the chest pain usually will be at the central area here. Okay, as where am I touching? Yeah, it will be very, very severe kind of uh chest pain. And then the pain sometimes they will move from the chest slowly to the left hand. Okay, sometimes you'll feel numbness on the left hand as well. Yeah, and on top of the chest pain, you might have giddiness or breathlessness, and then you will have a very pale face, and you know, you will feel, you don't feel good and comfortable having that. Yeah, so that is some of the typical signs and symptoms of a heart, pain, a heart attack that is coming along. So what is the difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack? Uh, so cardiac, so heart, so maybe we can understand what is heart attack first. So heart attack means basically your heart suddenly fails to work. So that is why it's called heart attack. Okay. So basically cardiac arrest is the term is similar to the uh, heart attack, the term. Uh, so do not be confused by it. Are they both the same? Similar, I would say. Mm. Mm. Because, then, because the signs and symptoms they produce are the same. Mm. Yeah, but, the underlying, but the underlying causes, it may be different. Yeah. So, so cardiac, the, the difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack is uh, cardiac arrest is just a term where the doctor actually says um, there's a, uh, the heart just stops or have um, some malfunction. Heart attack is, heart failure itself, heart attack itself is, is, is the symptom that you are having currently. So that's why some, sometimes after a cardiac arrest, you can see that the doctor will probably tell you that it's probably due to a heart attack, but it's just a term that the, the doctor will use. It's almost similar. Yeah, but yeah, we wouldn't call it normally a cardiac arrest because cardiac arrest, uh, happens in a lot of reasons. Um, so heart attack is a heart attack, cardiac arrest. Yeah, if you understand what. I mean. So um, to actually to, we just want to have a summary of the video, in case that some of you missed it. So we're just telling you um the techniques that can be can be taught um when when people have um shortness of breath. Yeah. Any any questions pertaining to that? Did, did any did all of you manage to catch? Um this okay, the, the video talks about uh what to do when there's shortness of breath. Correct. Hmm. Uh is this a heart attack survivor? Uh no, heart attack, uh heart attack is when the, when it happens. So uh, shortness of breath is another symptom by itself. So shortness of breath can happen in a lot of things. 
So heart attack is when the heart um, fails. The heart actually fails, um, causing by the risk factor. So the, like how my colleague mentioned, how do you know when you have a heart attack? You start to feel the chest pain, and the chest pain radiates to the hand, chest pain radiates to the jaws, yes. and the chest pain radiates to the um, sometimes shoulders. And Sorry, sometimes... Uh, it's kind of muffled. I'm quite here too clearly. Oh, can't okay. hear clearly. Can, yeah. can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Can okay. you repeat the, okay. your colleague was saying? Yeah. Okay, so as my colleague mentioned, what happens in a heart attack? How do you know if you're having a heart attack? Heart attack happens when you have chest pain, radiating sometimes numbness to the hand. It could radiate to the back, it could radiate to the jaws, it also could radiate to your shoulders. So heart attack, and then it also can be accompanied by giddiness, nausea, and sometimes in worst case scenario, you might even faint. And, that, and that's the worst case scenario that can happen. So um, again, you mentioned, you asked me what is a cardiac arrest. The cardiac arrest is just a term that, it's a medical term that the doctor used to just say that, oh, okay, the heart just stopped. Yeah. Okay, then in a case of a stroke, uh, the heart also can stop, right? Correct, yes, a stroke. So as I mentioned uh, in one of the risk factors, one of the factors that causing leading to a stroke is one is high blood pressure. So when the heart, when you have high blood pressure, the high blood pressure is a disease by itself, it's a chronic disease, right? In uh, Per se, in medical term, it's known as hypertension, which I'm sure a lot of you know. Hypertension causes high blood pressure. So high blood pressure, what happens? The high blood pressure causes the heart to beat faster and harder. So when the heart beats faster and harder, so all your arteries get blocked. That's when you get um, stroke. And that was one of the reasons we actually also thought the symptoms of the stroke. Hmm. Mm. So, so um, when a family member mm -hmm. uh, has breathlessness and this, uh, what are the actions uh, that should be taken? Yeah. So breathlessness comes in a lot. Yeah, because of this talk doesn't, talk, um, you know, cover proactive steps. You know, it's okay. it's talking very factually about what heart attack is, what causes it, you know, how to prevent it, what to do, you know. But we're talking about prevention. Uh, what if a family member mm -hmm. has, uh, yeah, how to detect that. Heart, number one heart, heart attack is coming the onset mm -hmm. and what to do yeah in case this person collapse and die before the eyes of the family member okay to go through um it's a very very uh, broad scenario like scenario like per se okay for example if you are going to zoom in into it, shortness of breath itself shortness of breath has a lot of reasons Shortness of breath have a lot of um why why the person becomes shortness of breath. Not a heart heart attack doesn't only cause shortness of breath. A lot of other diseases like asthma and all these kind of things also respiratory problems also cause shortness of breath. So how do you know the onset of a heart attack? Per se, per se, if I were to tell you honestly, apart from all the symptoms that comes, you know, chest pain, back pain, and all these kind of things. That's why we, our, the purpose of our health talk is to actually monitor the risk factors. So as we go through the risk factors, um, high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol, all this is monitoring of risk, uh, risk factors and of course the symptoms that comes with it. So how do you know if there's an onset of a heart attack? Okay, nobody, I even for me, I cannot tell you directly how do you know the onset of heart attack is coming. So normally when a person has a heart attack, okay, of course the first step to monitor is whether the person has chest pain. So if the person has chest pain, how bad is the chest pain? Chest pain leading to where? Chest pain uh, accompanied with shortness of breath, chest pain radiating to the shoulders, radiating to the head, and then you have um, limb, limb nut weakness, uh, or facial droopy, even as, or fa maybe facial droopiness and all this kind of thing, then this actually triggers a, a need to go to the hospital and do not wait. To call 95 straight away, go to the hospital, let the doctor um, check it out. Yeah. Do I answer your question? So, actually, mm -hmm. uh, generally, when there's breathlessness, uh, uh, if this patient, this person isn't a uh, asthmatic patient, mm -hmm. then that 
a lot should be raised, right? Okay. Because it, it can be delayed because it can start off with breathlessness. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's actually uh, having that acting, uh, going into action uh, when the window, the golden time is the golden. there, golden window. Because if there is delay and all, it can progress to be very serious. Okay, Cheryl, first question. Right or not? If, yeah. let's say, if let's say your family member has breathlessness, of course, if, number one, the breathlessness is very, very bad. Whether, whether or not um, the patient has asthma or any underlying diseases, that should actually trigger to go to the hospital straight away because shortness of breath um, cannot be treated at home needs a medical attention so that um, see after that from the in the hospital they can actually diagnose um, what what um, what is the underlying cause of the breathlessness it could be respiratory um, like for instance for now we are uh, all the normal you um, upper respiratory infection uh, all these also cause uh, breathlessness so if you really have breathlessness it straight away go to hospital do not wait anymore yeah okay. I think that that is good because yeah. I, I have a friend whose husband uh, died of heart attack yeah. it, while she was in the bedroom. He was working in the living room mm -hmm. and oh, there no. was no sign. He didn't even call for help or anything. Yeah. So he just collapsed. So she cannot figure out how come there is no uh, alert you know, mm. yeah, in yeah. that kind of heart attack. Yeah, a lot of times... Um, so she can't ask a dead person what happened, right? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times, the heart attack, that's why they call it um, the heart attack is a silent um, healer. Um, that's why, and that is why this health talk is actually um, that us community nurses wanted, want to teach the community to actually monitor the risk factors. What are the risks? Because a lot of times... Um, Technically, maybe um, a high percentage of us having high cholesterol, even for you know high cholesterol, hypertension, which are the main um, risk factors in heart attack, in heart failure, per se. Yeah. But again, if you were telling me um, about shortness of breath, of course, shortness of breath already requiring, if you really, really shortness of breath, straight away go to the hospital, do not wait anymore, because you have to seek medical attention and see and get some tests done. Yeah. Mm, I see. Mm. Okay, thank I you. I hope I answered your question. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I think it gets clearer as you uh, talk longer. Yes, thank you. Welcome. I think it's also important that, uh, like, uh, our previous health to mentioned that you should go for a health check at least mm -hmm. a yearly basis so that you can actually check if there's any underlining issues, maybe like high cholesterol or high blood pressure that you are not aware of. So it's still important for you to do your yearly health check -up. Hello, <clears throat> this is, uh, I'm Irina. I just uh, want to add on to um, the uh, what CT said. So basically, if let's say um, you think that the person has heart attack, so uh, it will be good also to encourage young those um, in your family, um, the younger ones to learn uh, CPR. Okay, uh, so so that um, you know now with uh, CPR and AED where below the block there's a lot of uh, you see the machine the AED uh, machine so if they are they learn how to do CPR and use the AED machine then they will be able even to um, be very fast you know to act when a person has a, a suspected heart attack so yeah so it's a good thing to encourage uh, you know those of you who are fit uh, to learn how to do CPR you know, the basic cardiac life support lah, as well as uh, the AED. Uh, what are the community, community nursing uh, pro program for it, all this? Uh, oh, this one, uh, learning? usually I think uh, you can, um, uh, these courses usually are held like, for example, by Red Cross lah, uh, or, you know, some of the voluntary welfare organizations lah. So um, for us, we are not conducting it uh, for laymen, but laymen can actually, you all can actually find out from um, 
the, for example, organization like Red Cross, lah. Yeah. Mm, they won't be able to cope for the national uh, education. Uh, so uh, yeah. I think it's also schools. Lah. Basically, uh, this one probably some of the students, they may increase awareness and do the promotion in schools. But um, because elderly also, is um, not everyone is fit to do the, you know, the uh, basic cardiac life support uh, mm -hmm. training. Lah. So that's why I think it's not very, um, it's not like, uh, we, we, we don't do, uh, we don't teach you all, lah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, so uh, for, for CPR and uh, AED, this one, somebody must administer on the patient itself. So let's say the, the, pay, the, the person who is about, with the onset of heart attack, huh, how can he self-help himself? There's no one in the house. Because, you know, lately there are, there are news about people uh, collapse and dying at home. Yeah, if let's say he has no, uh, wow. he doesn't know the kind of thing, then uh, if he is, has access to the phone, try it as fast as possible to call 995, la, of course, ambulance 995. Um, then if let's say, um, if he has already uh, some medicine like aspirin, uh, he should take aspirin. La. Yeah, but uh, usually aspirin is prescribed for those who already has um, this um, uh, heart condition, you know, uh, before. La. So, yeah. So if let's say he um, is able to then quickly call 995 to inform of um, the that he's having a difficulty in breathing and he has a chest pain or something. La. Yeah. Mm, I see, I see. And for aspirin, uh, what what dosage to take? Because this aspirin is being prescribed by the doctor for those who what so usually it's hundred uh, milligram every day. But um, if let's say he suddenly has a heart attack, um, I don't think so because Malaysia, uh, sorry, Singapore do not um, have um, aspirin over the counter where you know you can get it not get it at home la. you know if you want to store aspirin also it's uh, very rare la. usually we store panadol paracetamol so uh yeah so if let's say the person is already on aspirin yeah la, he can pop in the aspirin or but usually those people who have heart attack they will normally have uh, the ggn tablets already so they mm -hmm. will pop under the tongue you know the gtn la. yeah actually my classmate uh, died of heart attack when he was studying, collapsed, and then he was found, he said, on the table. So people thought that he was taking a long nap. Mm -hmm. so nobody went to disturb him. Then um, when, and that time he was young, he was an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I was thinking, you know, people who are healthy can suffer from a heart attack. So, uh, yeah, but um, it depends. Uh, maybe he has an underlying heart condition, probably that was not detected, also. So it's quite difficult to say. But usually, those people who collapse, maybe they have um, gone, uh, for example, in a marathon or something, then they run and then, you know, their heart is uh, lack of oxygen, you know, suddenly they collapse. So that is uh, more likely the scenario. But sometimes um, it can be also an infection of the heart that causes it. So it's difficult to say. Um, what happened that caused him to uh, suddenly mm. pass away. He may have an underlying uh, heart condition or he mm. may have an infection of the heart, you know, uh, you know the uh, heart valve or something like that. So um, that one is a, um, difficult to say, yeah. you know, yeah. Thank you, sister. Yeah, normally, a uh, heart attack, you wouldn't know. Lah. As in, sometimes the patient itself already have underlying um, issues. That's why, as my colleague Felicia mentioned, um, it will be better to go for the health checkup and just to make sure that everything is um, is okay, you know, during the health screening. Because sometimes, even for teen people, you might have high cholesterol without knowing. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, several years ago, there was an MP in Jurong, I think, uh, mm. Bukit Batu or Jurong, and I, um, something 
uh, I cannot remember his uh, surname. Yeah, he had a good bill of, he had a bill of good health. Everything checked, he was good. But he collapsed, heart attack, and he was gone. Yeah, yeah. it's just shocking. So things like that uh, couldn't, he would know that it's coming on, but mm. he was alone. Uh. So I think that's where it was beyond reach for help. Yeah, so as Sister Irene mentioned, um, okay, it could be other underlying diseases, even infection. We are not sure. We do not know how. We do, like Again, we do not know what. There's a lot of causes and symptoms, a heart attack, a lot, a lot of causes. So um, if let's say in the event, if let's say you have a family or a family member who um, you probably just have simple symptom of shortness of breath like you, you mentioned, so the best is just to straight away call 995, irregardless, irregardless if you're unsure, like, eh, like I can still breathe, but I'm very, very breathless, like I'm sure I carry on, should I not carry on, just straight away call 995 and just bring them or ask them to go to the hospital straight away just for a checkup, it doesn't matter, yeah, at least we, we manage to, you know, uh, treat the cause and find out why, why, where's the source of the shortness of breath, rather than it gets worse and it uh, trigger on to something else. Yeah. Yes, I, I thought that that is most important. Mm, yeah, yes, thank, yes. You, uh, thank you, Nurse City. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? May I just check with you? Uh, can severe stress cause heart attack? Mm. Stress. Yes, definitely. <laughs> like, a I think you can see be very healthy, drama, but, right? Yeah, huh? but your blood pressure can go up, right? Mm. So yeah, so your yeah, blood pressure the person could up, have uh, a good yeah. view of health because I am I'm yeah. trying to figure out how healthy people, you know, they oh, the um, medical checkup and all was very good and can suddenly die of heart attack. Ah uh, yes. So, well, that's probably one of the reasons maybe, mm. maybe he uh, has uh, uh, before that been very tired, has not been having enough rest, that kind of thing. So he's been taxing his heart, for example. Uh, um, it could be, but um, also maybe he, uh, some people may have uh, some atypical chest, uh, you know, symptoms that um, um, they may not, they may brush off, you know. Uh, sometimes um, the heart attack may not be, you know, the atypical one where there's a severe chest pain, radiate to the arm, to the jaw, the kind of thing. Uh, but some of it may be a bit more subtle where there's numbness uh, or they may even experience like heartburn like that, uh, especially for women. So that one can be, you know, if let's say it's prolonged, uh, you better get it checked. Law. So uh, the reason is uh, it may be atypical type of symptoms that actually has... Um, some under uh, uh, warning, you know, that says that your your blood vessel uh, supplying the heart uh, is uh, partially blocked, you know, or, you know, narrowed, you know. So that's why uh, if you have some uh, abnormal symptoms like that, some numbness of the hand, you know, or that radiates or some heartburn type of symptoms, that kind of thing, it's better to get it uh, checked out. Lah. Yeah. Oh. Good. Um, can you give uh, a description of what heartburn is? Uh, it's like something like you, you have a lot of gastric, you know, gastric type of uh, oh, thing. It's not that the yeah. heart, chest the, area is feeling hot. The type of no. regurgitation, you know, the gastric type of, you know, um, uh, feeling. Like yeah. Discomfort, Sometimes like you, may, discomfort. you may think it's gastric, but it's actually, you know. Bloatedness. Yeah. Bloatedness. Yeah. Chest, a uh, heartburn, is it? Uh, to do with like the feeling of bloatedness yeah sometimes it's associated with that so there may be really because of gastric but it may be also uh, uh, they may mistaken it you know like mm -hmm. it, it's, it looks like heartburn but then it may be actually a, a, you know uh, a the heart you know the mm -hmm. heart crying out for uh, as a oh, so they may take it lightly yeah, uh, that yeah. is gastric only but yes, actually yes. it's the heart cry for help. Yes, correct. Yeah, correct. yeah. 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 so it's not so easy yeah. to uh, be sure yes. that it can be the onset As, of yes. a heart attack. 
Correct, especially the elderly, the symptoms may be yes. and women, women, uh, women as well. Uh, sometimes you feel more tired, you know, the kind of thing. And yeah. then some numbness there, you know, then you ignore it, you know, because you're too busy. And they say busy. because I didn't sleep uh, well, busy, uh, yes, yes. I can so uh, uh, you never go and check out exactly what it is, but actually it's something serious, but you never check out because you think, yeah, oh, yeah. because uh, it's normal. I, I, I've been working very hard, so I become more tired, that's all. So that's why uh, you need to have a checkup. Lah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, good. Thank you for your clarification. I think it brings mm. better understanding. Thank no you, problem. thank you. So, so if I say the heart attack, um, the heart attack is not uh, being detected early. What happened is, that the heart muscles can die. So when the heart muscles die, the pumping of the heart is not so efficient. So it can lead to heart failure. Lor. Yeah. So no. heart failure is uh, 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 like a chronic already. Heart attack is the acute, you know. The, then, then it happened, your, your heart has no oxygen nutrition and your heart is crying out. So pain, pain, you know, that kind of thing. So quick. So you must uh, quickly, uh, within four to six hours, that window period, uh, go to hospital, the doctor can open up again. Then it can bring oxygen back to your heart. Then your heart muscles, you know, don't get so much damage. But if I say your heart muscles get damaged a lot and then uh, that area uh, cannot be repaired then the heart uh, will be very inefficient in pumping. So that's when it, it causes heart failure. Heart failure is long-term already, you know. Uh, your heart is very inefficient pumping. So there's uh, 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 more breathlessness because the water will accumulate. Mm. You know, you you know, you're, you're, you're get a, a lot of other symptoms. Uh. So that's why we say need fluid restriction, low sodium, all those things. So in order to, you know, uh, not have this uh, chronic you know, type of heart failure type of thing. We hope that, you know, people will be more aware and get treated as soon as possible, you see? So that's why uh, if you have heart attack, it's an emergency. Call 995 immediately. You know, call mm. ambulance 995, you know? So that's yeah. being proactive. AED, proactive. Yes. And get AED. AED is the defibrillator, you know. But at I the think bottom many people don't know how to use, including myself. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Yes. So if that's why I'm that's asking, a, where, yeah. where can I learn? I mean, it oh. could be my neighbor. I, I can mean, get a senior activity center. If I say there's a senior activity center down there, um, I'm sure that there will so be some who are DCLS trained. <laughs> huh? Okay. Or the CC, la, the uh, community center, or the RC, you know? Yeah. Because I think, um, especially COVID, people don't go out so often. So maybe can I just put it at this um, point that, uh, you know, to the community nurses and take it up that, um, you know, uh, more of this AED training courses and CPR be, be disseminated because mm. uh, lives can be saved. You never know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, did, I see a AED, but it never occurred to me until now then I, I realized, yeah, I never know because... Um, elderly mm. neighbors can be around, so it's good to mm. at least have people who know how to apply. That one, because I think we, we are in the flat, so to go downstairs to next to the lift lobby to get, get the AED run up again, or if I don't know, I have to go and check who knows how to do it before the ambulance comes. Mm. Yeah, so that that is. Also, the part of the window period resource uh, action. Yeah, I think um, for, for you all, probably the calling of the ambulance is the most important. Mm -hmm. Call 995, you know, and stay with the person. And if there's a younger person who can actually um, be called to help, then and who knows how to do the AED. La. But for now, I think at the moment, uh, we can bring up and see what can be uh, done whether it's uh, possible or not, but can uh, through, go through. it's practical. It's yeah. a practical session, so I don't think so. Uh, we will be able to conduct that, lah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe through mm. PA. Mm, yes. People Association. I'm. I'm not sure how the network is done. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. They may organize, lah, the PA. Yeah. I have never seen any mm -hmm. uh, such causes at the community centers. Yeah. Because CPR, you need a lot of strength, you see. So, uh, um, you know, to do the pumping. Uh, yeah. The AED doesn't need mouth-to-mouth -mouth or anything, right? Uh, no, no. Yeah, so uh, AED is just uh, shocking the person. 
Yeah. But it comes with the uh, uh, basic cardiac life support as well. The pumping, la, the breathing. Oh, I see. see. <laughs> yeah. So it, was, it can, yeah, it's quite something to really learn. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's quite difficult. Yeah. Yeah. We see how, la, huh? At the moment, uh, we just let you all be more aware huh? uh, that call 995, huh? call ambulance 995. <laughs> Thank you. And someone who can get AED, okay. Uh, those, you know, train in BCLS or AED, then, you know, yeah, we can uh, uh, ask them to help. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Irene. Hey, thank you, Sister Irene, Siti, and Ray Hao, and also Sherry for the conversation that we actually learned a lot. So in view of time, not sure if anyone else has other questions regarding heart failure for our nurses. We can probably take in one more question if anyone on the ground has any other questions. Okay. If you do not have other questions, it's okay. Uh, so if you would like to actually view the health talk again, you can actually go over to Radima's Facebook to actually view the, uh, to recap yourself on the heart failure health talk. Otherwise, next week is actually our uh, heart failure talk in Mandarin. So if you are not able to catch what we are saying in English today, you can join us for our uh, next week health talk in Mandarin itself also about, about heart failure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, 20th September will be our next health talk, which will be on uh, general information sharing about cancer itself. So it will be on 20th September. Our timing will still remain the same. It will be from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. itself. Okay. So if you have any other questions along the way, you can actually uh, do call our hotline. We see if we're able to assess, uh, attend to you accordingly. La. So if no further questions once again thank you uh Ray Hao and City for the sharing and okay, we will you. see y'all again next Monday. Thank bye you bye. everyone. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. See you.